Charlie Rose, and I play the banjo and pedal steel and stuff with Elephant Revival. So, um, Elephant Revival, there's a lot of different genres involved. Um, bluegrass, I hate saying the word Americana because it can be a catch-all term. Americana is already, and bluegrass is already, um, a, you know, a combination <laughs> of different styles. So we're in some... In, in many ways, we're just carrying on the tradition of, of grabbing from American and other world styles and, you know, and going, taking what we hear and creating our own music. Uh, we also try to um, capture some of the essence of, of that music, too, yeah. and, and represent it, but at the same time not be uh, bound by any limitations. So, you know, we incorporate, there's a lot of, of um, you know, Appalachian uh, traditional American music as well as blues as well as uh, rock and roll which is another kind of amalgamation um, and then we we draw from some some of the you know Celtic World and English yeah. Celtic English Isles even some Latin and Asian you know we, we yeah. just sort of like we African. like what we like African absolutely well it's funny percussion. you say that because um, someone might look at your band and say that blurs the lines of bluegrass I look at it and I say it's kind of a full circle thing because bluegrass originated in the British Isles and Africa. Absolutely. So what do you think with that? Like when someone might look at it like that, but but when you look at the influences, it actually is a full circle type of thing. Yeah, it it very much is. Um, you know, any any band in, in America now that kind of is playing this Americana or this kind of folk music kind of indie yeah. folk music and stuff it's all coming out of a tradition it's just through a new lens and through uh, on a on a new generation and um you know we've we've been uh working on this band for over a decade now but we've never sounded more like ourselves yeah you know, and, and, and you try you spend your time as a younger player trying to sound like other things and then eventually you get to the point where you're like, Well, I'll never really sound you know, we'll never sound like Del McCurry, we'll never sound like David Grisman, but we love those guys and us you know, we'll take some of that that we that we are able to, to gather, uh, and then you know, it becomes part of our music, but we're also coming from a whole different place and different people. Where does your background with bluegrass um, come from? Where, where are you from originally? I grew up in Kansas, Okay. Uh, you know, near Kansas City, Lawrence, Kansas. And Are you a Jayhawk fan? Oh, yeah, man. I went to KU, Rock Chalk. Really? Yeah. I'm a huge Jayhawk oh, fan. Oh, that's great. Being from North Carolina. Right now, I, I actually did, game's got to be almost over, right? We've Yeah. Uh, 6.30 at UC Davis. Oh, man. Playing? Yeah. Uh, hopefully it's going well. I don't I should, follow the basketball team. I do. Yeah, my parents are rabid fans, and I'm like a fair weather fan. So I'm for, a rabid fan, Okay. and I'm from New York. It <laughs> oh, cool. Just, it just happened that way because, you know, like when you're younger, um, there's an influence on whatever's on television, like in terms of sports. Yeah. Like some people that are in their 40s or 50s are big Steelers fans because that was what was on TV, mm -hmm. and people in their 30s and 40s would be Cowboys fans. Right, so my yeah. whole thing was like the mid '90s, Roy Williams, Jayhawks, that like 35 and 0. Yeah, Mizzou man, that was, oh yeah, that yeah. oh I remember that. They went yeah. undefeated and Mizzou beat them. And oh, I, just oh, oh, like, oh. But I remember being like a, a young kid and I was like, I love that <laughs> team. So yeah, just, yeah, obsessive Ooh. Kansas fan. Well, cool, man. That's great. Not to derail <laughs> you from the conversation, but well, let me tell you about my my uh, growing up in Kansas and my exposure to bluegrass music was at a, a festival called the Walnut Valley Festival in Winfield, Kansas. And I remember, as a teenager, really being being into playing electric guitar and playing blues yeah. and jazz. And when I when I went to Winfield, I, I heard the sound of the banjo kind of cascading through the trees. I heard upright bass and mandolin and flat pick and guitar. And I'm like, man, whoa! There's something real about that. There's something really grabbing me about that music. And that was when I decided to start playing the banjo yeah. and started messing around on the on the mandolin. Was it kind of like outer space where where you grew up, like like your peers and your family? Was that was bluegrass anywhere near you? Besides Not me that? personally. Yeah. And I have a lot of friends who grew up in bluegrass and going to fiddle camps or doing yeah. you know around that music and and uh where i grew up I, I wasn't really exposed to it until i kind of sought it out and it was um it was really that that time going there and in, in, in winfield uh and winfield was also important to the kind of the formation of the band in its early days too bonnie Payne is from uh northeastern oklahoma yeah. uh, around yeah. tulsa yeah, and yeah. tahlequah 
And so her and her family would go to Winfield also. Um, and that was somewhere that the band went early on in their stages. And you'd camp out and play music all night yep. and you hear all, you know, you just, you just become the music in that kind of a setting. And it was uh, in part that experience. It's always seemed like, at least, like I write, I've written a, about all genres for years, but lately, especially living in the South these days, um, the focus tends to shift over towards bluegrass and string music for obvious reasons. It's all, it's all around. It's a big mm-hmm. part of the culture. Um, but for me, it's always felt like the most accessible, accessible um, type of music where um, I've never met a bluegrass picker that really had a bad attitude. I mean, I th- there's probably, I mean, <laughs> I mean, there probably is, but like in general, they want to share the wisdom rather than say every man for himself. Sure. I yeah. Would, it's a very it's a collective experience. And I agree with you, but I've met no, a couple I'm just, of more. I'm just kidding. No, but I've met a couple more over the years. But for the most part, they're pretty. They want to share the knowledge if you're interested. Absolutely, if you're willing to listen. Yeah, and which is really cool. And even um, even people who are at the the highest level of of bluegrass or of this acoustic music um, are accessible. Yeah. And generally friendly and willing to share what they know. Um, now that that being said, I th- I think it. It's up to individuals to, you know, seek out what they're looking for, and you can't really expect anyone to just give you something. And sometimes they do, but but really the the thing I think that distinguishes the great players is they know how to basically steal it. Yeah. <laughs> they know how to just Agreed. hear it and see it and go, oh, that's how you do it, and then they can do that. Yeah. But then they're they're drawing from different wells, just as any player is. So as you have the the multiple angles and sources that you're drawing on, you get a, a more refined picture of what it is that you're trying to do yeah, and agreed. what the truth in music that you hear, where you find that, you as you see it from different angles, yeah, you yeah. C- you get a clearer picture. Well, and 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 to that, it's um, keep being inspired. Absolutely, you, know? you want to be inspired. Well, when I, when I interviewed Grisman earlier, he was telling me about they just Decca just released these unreleased never before known um bill monroe tapes and he was telling me like he's going bananas over the whole thing he's oh, like oh man i need to, like i need to dig into that that's something yeah that- yeah yeah and saying how at this age this stage in his career that's his focus is to like absorb that entire six disc collection of unreleased material and and put it into his plan yeah you know and 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 that's that's inspiring to me that somebody like david grisman who already has had such a phenomenal career and has done so much he doesn't need to to work yeah he doesn't you know but he wants to and that's that uh that gives him motivation and a spark and inspiration and and uh to to see that all throughout your journey and the whole process as a musician, you never really can rest. It's all, yeah. you know, that's why you call it practicing. You practice law, well, you that's practice, why I got into it. practice medicine, you practice yeah. music. It's an ongoing thing. Um, and so guys like him and Bela Fleck and I mean, Del McCurry and all, all, the, all the amazing musicians that play in their bands, those guys are always working at it. So anytime that I think maybe I'm in a good spot and I don't need to practice anymore, I don't need to keep learning, I just slap myself in the face and yeah. go, you know, go back to school because you always got stuff to learn. Yeah.